Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back for this second episode in Ramadan uh, to all of our Iqra uh, Bangla channel. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everybody's Ramadan and um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. So what we want to discuss this week is about the physical and mental uh, well-being of this month and what Ramadan wants from us and how else it benefits us beyond the spiritual aspect of this month of Ramadan. Of course, if we were to look at, uh, there's a number of researches that have been done on the body of a fasting person. Not just the body, the, physio uh, the physiology, along with the, the spiritual benefits and the mental health benefits and so on of the month of Ramadan. Uh, one of our scholars, uh, Hakim al Maulana Ashraf Ali Thanwi, he, uh, rahimahullah, he reduced Ramadan, says that there are three objectives of Ramadan. And uh, there are three points made in Arabic, and I'll translate them for you. It says, Taqlilu uh, Ta'am, Taqlilu Al-Manam, and Taqlilu Al-Ikhtilati bil awam And that's really interesting, that these are some of the objectives of Ramadan. Of course, we do Ramadan and we fast for the sake of Allah. We don't do it because it's good for our diet. That would be the wrong thing to do, right? If somebody did intend in their month of Ramadan that I'm doing this because, you know what, I need to go on a diet anyway, I need to eat less food, so this gives me the excuse for that. That should not be our primary intention. Our primary intention should be for the sake of Allah because we need ikhlas and sincerity. That's when we get the best out of something. And you're going to get the physical health benefits anyway. You're going to get that whether you, whether you intend it or not, you'll get the physical health benefits because you're not eating. All right, so if you're not eating, there's a benefit in that. Fasting is considered, as the Prophet, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O people who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you just as it was prescribed upon the people before you. Ulama have mentioned that fasting is one of the oldest forms of worship, meaning to stay hungry. Right, to not eat something because that in itself is extremely beneficial for the human being. Nowadays, there's numerous studies that are showing the benefit of the 5 plus 2 diet, which means that you fast two days a week and then you can you know, act norm, uh, eat normally on the other five days of the week. That's something that's been recommended to us 1500 years ago about fasting Mondays and Thursdays. But now, mashallah, there's uh, you know, th there's a lot of discussion about that as there being because the body needs a detoxification, uh, uh, detoxing process. Because when we eat too much, and uh, there's many scholars of ours like Ibn Khaldun, the great sociologist, rahimahullah, he discussed how people in villages generally tend to be better off than people in cities. They have less diseases, they have less illnesses, and so on. Because why? Because they have a very simple, straightforward diet. Whereas people in cities, and this was talking about those days, people in cities have very complex diets. Many different things are introduced and that obviously creates a lot of confusion for the human body. Apparently, that's what my understanding is from what he said. So now what Allah wants to do for us is that eat less. Because this will benefit you in your worship as well. So what Ramadan does is that it puts you in a stress situation, in a unstable, in a destabilized situation, you're, uh, as Hakim uh, Ulum and Tan we said as well, you lessen your food, right? You lessen your sleep. So Taqlilul Ta'am was lessening your food uh, and drink, of course. Uh, Taqlilul Manam, lessening your sleep, right? How do you do these two things? Well, obviously you don't have lunch. You miss out lunch. You have iftar. Now, the problem is that many people mess it up and they totally defeat the purpose that iftar time and after tarawih, they actually make up for all the food that they had missed. So they have a massive meal at iftar by which it becomes difficult for them to do tarawih. And then after tarawih, they like to have another meal, especially if the night is big, that, oh, I missed uh, breakfast in the morning. So, you know, oh, I missed uh, another meal or my tea time. So let me have that. That's wrong. We actually are supposed to try to minimize our intake of food during the month of Ramadan. The missing of the lunch meal is there for a purpose. It's not just to delay it. Right? It's not to, I know Ramadan, mashallah, even our women, they have so much blessing. I don't know, they are able to make foods that we don't get outside the month of Ramadan. And mashallah, Allah gives them some amazing energy to cook some amazing dishes during the month of Ramadan. But I think what we need to do is we need to be really focused on our health issue. Right? Also, what we eat during Ramadan. Right? That, that would really, really help our bodies and help our connection with Allah. A stronger believer is a better believer. A healthier believer is a better believer. They have more potential. So number two, we also decrease our sleep. 
right? Taqlilul manam, we also decrease our sleep because what happens is that number one, you have to do taraweeh. And generally, taraweeh is done after Isha. And traditionally speaking, people used to sleep early after Isha, all right? I know nowadays because of TV and social media, you know, you've got lots to do and people sleep very late. But the idea is that you sleep less and then even now, you have to then wake up for suhoor and hopefully tahajjud, right? And I would suggest that Ramadan is a time when it's easy for people to do tahajjud. It's so difficult throughout the year for many people to wake up extra early to do the tahajjud prayer which you have to do before Fajr time. But in Ramadan, you wake up for suhoor anyway. So just do two or four akats and then do two, three minutes of dua. And you'll be amazed that what you will get because of that in the month of Ramadan. So anyway, the sleep becomes less, somewhat less. You still have to go to work in the morning. So you're lessening your food, you're lessening your sleep. Then the last thing the Prophet, uh, last thing that the ulama say is that you also decrease your meeting with the common folk. How's that? You don't. I mean, you, you know, Ramadan, you meet people and so on. Well, this is for those who are doing etika for the last 10 days. Right? So for example, men, you will do etikaf in the masjid and the sisters, you can actually do etikaf in your own homes. The benefit of this is that, for example, if a man is in the masjid, he's going to be meeting people because hermitude and complete isolation is not necessarily the recommended way to go about things all the time. Right? It's just a bit of solitude. So you're only going to meet people who are in the masjid. Okay? And those are going to be believers. Because the Prophet ﷺ said that anybody who frequents the masjid bear witness that he's a believer. So if you do meet with somebody, you're going to meet with believers. You're not going to meet with anybody else. You're not going to be distracted. You're going to be focused. That's the purpose. There's a, a lot of physical benefits that come out of Ramadan. There are so many people, mashallah, who after Ramadan, they kick the habit of smoking. They kick the habit of drinking too much fizzy drinks. Because in Ramadan, they didn't have any. So, you know, people say that you make resolutions in New Year. I don't see the point of making a resolution in New Year because New Year is just a change of a date. It was 31st of December, now it became 1st of January the next year, but it makes no difference during this time, right? There's nothing different in, except maybe a few fireworks that they do on, in the night. There's no difference. In Ramadan, there's a massive difference because your whole system is changed. You know, you're forced to change your eating times, your sleeping habits, your sleeping times. And you're doing a lot more worship and you're doing a lot more for the sake of Allah. So spiritually you are, you are benefiting from doing so much more for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after Ramadan, you can actually start making that difference. After Ramadan, if you carry on, you may not be able to maintain the same thing. Shaitan will be out again as well. And you can eat all day, right? But if we can continue to kick off the bad habits the bad uh, physical aspects and so on, maintain that, then continue to do some exercise and so on. People should actually do some exercise in that in Ramadan as well, right? So I know it's, it's a bit more difficult, but be, the, so they say that one of the best times to do exercise is just before iftar, because then you can just come and do iftar. Walk to the masjid rather than go in a car to the masjid, right? But don't play such, ex, uh, such extreme sports that make you tired because that's not right. Okay, and having said that, as I explained in the last session, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala magnifies the rewards in Ramadan, there's a hadith which says that if somebody misses a fast of Ramadan, right, you know, for <clears throat> without a valid excuse, and then they try to make up by fasting for the entire remainder of the year, or maybe for the entire remainder of their life. <clears throat> the entire remain, remainder of their life outside Ramadan, they would not be able to get the same one day reward that they missed because of the misfast. That's how concentrated the rewards of Ramadan are. Allah just packs the reward in. So you want to get as much as possible of this month from this, right? So if somebody's, for example, got a football game to play and they say you know what I'm not gonna fast today or they've got a very important business meeting and they're gonna be um, in you know with a prospective customer or a client and you say like you know I don't want to seem strange you need to be bold about this you need to be confident about this for example if you go with somebody if you're in the corporate world and you're going to take somebody for lunch a prospective client 
Now what happens is that if they want to order a drink, you say, no, I don't drink, in a very confident way, that will have a huge impression on the other person. You can say, you know, drink is uh, the mother of so many illnesses, so many diseases, so many uh, crimes and, and, and so many wrongs in the world. That gives off a very confident idea. Whereas if you say, oh, no, no, you know what, I can't drink. Uh, I'm a Muslim, I can't drink. It makes you seem like so unconfident and it makes people feel sorry for you as though you really want to drink and you don't want to drink. So that's why you need, we need to develop confidence in our faith. right? So Ramadan has multiple benefits. We do it for the sake of Allah. For the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, with faith, you know, not because he's doing it for a diet purpose or he's doing, doing it to show, but he's doing it out of faith in Allah and ihtisaban, reckoning from Allah a reward, expecting, anticipating, in anticipation. It's been left broad, it's been left open. Anticipation of whatever you want from Allah, forgiveness, blessing, generosity, reward, love, acceptance, paradise, whatever you want all of your back sins will be forgiven. So Ramadan is a time of purification. Not only does it purify the body from its various toxins and lets the body rehabilitate itself, it, it's a rehabilitation from our sins that we commit, from the wrongs that we have done, from the baggages of sins that we are carrying from the past. Ramadan is a time to clean it to such a degree that we can come out of Ramadan, inshallah, like the day our mothers gave, gave us birth, right? Uh, and then if somebody's Ramadan is really, really, really accepted and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this person, inshallah, Allah will give them the ability to travel for the Hajj to his house, which is the ultimate gift of a believer that they get to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, as you can see, Ramadan has... Fasting has multiple approaches. There's a number of uh, researches out there that show exactly what happens over a 30-day period of fasting, how the body... Because what's going to happen sometimes is that in the middle, people start feeling difficult. So they fast, they initially they've got a lot of uh, vigor and a lot of uh, energy. And then after that, they'll see that uh, in the middle, what happens is that they start getting a bit tired and so on. And that's normal, that's normal. There's different processes that are happening in the body. And then after that, uh, the last 10 days, we have more incentives. So the beauty of it is that in the last 10 days, we have a lot more incentives for, because Laylatul Qadr is most likely in the last 10 days. And we're told, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to go and do itikaf uh, during this time. Uh, and so we're recommended to do itikaf as much as we can. Uh, uh, especially during these last 10 days which means that we cut away from everybody uh, and as many people as possible and then we just go to the masjid and, and we spend time down there. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the tawfiq to assist us again uh, and for the remaining days of this month of Ramadan to really bless us and to allow us to use the remaining days even better than what we may have done in the previous days and to give us of the concentrated benefits of this month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again make this Ramadan greater than any Ramadan before it for us and allow, allow us to come out of it better than we've ever been and to remain close to Him even after the month of Ramadan. Jazakallah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us, bless us all, and we will see you again soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.